what an amazing, what an amazing testimony. Thank you uh, to our sister to uh, to share that with us this afternoon. And uh, you know, I just want to say uh, hi to Jerry Moses Brown for leading us through the <laughs> the wilderness. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, really, I mean, I've never met Jerry in person, but I feel like I know him through Zoom and his personality. Uh, wonderful, wonderful brother. And um, as far as, uh, sorry, <clears throat> as far as Lenny and Lisa, uh, I mean, I think we can all say uh, this couple is an example uh, from the scripture. Now, we read of two people in the scripture uh, named Aquila and Priscilla. And uh, if you do a quick search, uh, the six times that they're mentioned, Aquila is mentioned three times first, and Priscilla is mentioned three times first. And it just shows, and you only find that in the King James Bible, uh, it shows a beautiful balance between this couple, Priscilla and Aquila. And uh, I think we can all say, I mean, uh, Lisa is like, uh, you know, <laughs> she's, well, I mean, I don't want to, I'm thinking of our dog that we have now. We have a, a coon hound, which I've didn't know anything about coon hounds, but I mean, boy, when Lisa gets on your scent, man, she's not going to let go until she uh, contacts you and finds you. <laughs> and Lenny is such a great support and a great encourager to me and, and um, to all of you down there. And uh, those of us way up in the, uh, up in Canada here, we're so privileged to be uh, part of this. Um, Lenny and Lisa know I've had a rough week this week, so I hope you'll uh, bear with me. Um, I may ramble a bit. Um, I was joking with them. I had to have a procedure this week, and I, I was on a fentanyl trip. So <laughs> that's what they used to knock me out with. I never knew that until I read the thing afterwards, like, oh, fentanyl. Okay. And then my coon hound, as you can see, he did his number on my notes. Uh, he got that this morning. So here we go. We're going to try to complete this chart uh, today. So let's just read a scripture together. Um, and Luke uh, chapter 24, just as a way of a jumping off point. Sorry for that long preamble, but uh, we we got to encourage one another. I mean, this is this is where it's at, right? So, Luke twenty four forty four, and he said unto them, "These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses." And in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Let's just open with a word of prayer. Our Father, we just thank thee for this time together to look into thy word. Pray that thou help us, Father, our train of thought and to uh, exalt our Lord Jesus Christ. And that we may be an encouragement to one another, Father, even for this time that we can gather uh, on Zoom and in person. And we just thank Thee for the Scripture. Uh, we thank Thee uh, for all that is written and uh, how privileged uh, we are in this dispensation to hold the whole canon of Scripture and as Paul says, that we may understand the manifold wisdom of God. And we just pray that we may 
as a group of thy people, as ambassadors, that we may handle the word of life rightly and uh, dispensationally and rightly divided, and that we may glean from it and that we may uh, it may help us in our lives. Our Father, we um, fall short of what we should be, at least I do, uh, in our confidence, but we just thank thee that we have like-minded folk that we can gather with, brothers and sisters. And we just thank thee for this time. In the name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's uh, when we come to the scriptures and we see what the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, saying to these uh, uh, people at the time. Uh, he said, these are the words which I speak unto you. And he mentions here the law of Moses in the prophets and in the Psalms. So first of all, it really is a, is a great comfort to us to know that the Lord Jesus Christ had access to copies of the scriptures. And that is the way that God has uh, deemed to uh, have his word for us preserved in copies he didn't have the originals but he had the written word and uh, the law of moses and the prophets and the psalms so we want to look at the scriptures and we want to we want to do a little study on the four gospels that we started the last time and so when you think about it why why are there four uh we call them the Gospels. I mean, that's the title of them. But why are these four accounts written concerning the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, we started last week and we, or sorry, last month. But I just wanted to uh, just drive home the fact that uh, in in Romans chapter 16, a verse that we studied a number of months ago, uh, Romans 16 25 and now to him that has the power to establish you verse 26 but it now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting god uh when we look at romans chapter one paul a servant of jesus christ called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of god and he puts in a parenthesis in verse two which he had promised a four by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So again, Paul had access to the Scriptures. Uh, he had copies of the Scriptures. And he picks up here and says uh, that were promised by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. Now, it's, 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 uh, notice in verse 3, it says, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection. And we know that uh, Paul, uh, when, he, when he is preaching Christ, uh, we know that he's not preaching Christ according to prophecy. But the foundation that is laid is Jesus Christ. He tells us that. So whether it is the prophecy program or whether it is the mystery program, Jesus Christ is the foundation of all, right? So we got to keep that in mind. So when we go back to the God, when we go back to the gospels, um, Elizabeth told me, don't go into that Ernie, about, but I just going to mention it. If you notice uh, the verse we read, the pro uh, Moses, right, and the prophets and the Psalms, if you notice when the Lord was speaking from the Old Testament scriptures, and maybe we'll study this someday when we talk about translations and, and, uh, and the scripture, but the Old Testament, uh, as a Jewish person looks at it, is divided in three parts. Uh, and it actually ends with Chronicles. Now, it, because, you know, it's kind of strange. Why is Chronicles like right after 
first, second Kings, first, second Chronicles, right? But that's actually the way the Old Testament ends uh, for a Jewish person in their what's called the Tanakh, right? Uh, and it ends with this, verse 22 of chapter 36 of Second Chronicles. Wow, that. Okay, I gotta I gotta start giving these references better. Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 22. And now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah, uh, that it might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia, and so on. So this is the way it ends. Now, it, when, when we talk about the 400, quote unquote, years of silence, and, you know, so here's, here's a Jewish person, and they, they're reading their Tanakh, uh, and they get to the end of the writings, the Kedavim, which is 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 where it ends with Second Chronicles. And there's no word from the Lord. I mean, in when you think about it, it's, you know, when I was praying there, it was on my heart that you know we sit here with the privilege. You know how how privileged we are as a people of god to have the whole canon of scripture and here the jewish people you know hadn't heard from the lord uh 400 years and uh you know they were in verse 23 uh for sorry verse 21 of that chapter we're just reading in chronicles to fulfill the word of the lord by the mouth of jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her sabbaths for as long as she lay desolate to fulfill the three score uh, and 10 years. So this 70 years of captivity and they come out of captivity and they go back and they're trying to rebuild and 400 years of science. And sometimes we, uh, you know, are not, not, I wouldn't say critical, but we go like, why didn't they see this? You know, why didn't they see? And we're going to look at, beautiful scriptures that uh you know concerning the four views of christ so why are there four views well first of all it would have helped them to understand it had they been reading the scriptures in the old testament when the lord jesus christ came on the scene first of all we have john the baptist a wonderful prophet who came so finally this silence is broken and we see John the Baptist coming on the scene. And I mean, you know, those beautiful words in John, you know, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And as, as he goes and he preaches the gospel, the, uh, as Eric always explains to us, the at hand phase of the kingdom, and he, and he's preaching the good news of the kingdom, the good news of, of Christ. He's the forerunner, the messenger. And they didn't see that. Well, you know, I was thinking of this lesson today. I thought, well, you know, we just heard a wonderful testimony by our sister. And the same with Elizabeth and I. You know, 50 years reading the scripture and trying to understand it and living in the in the four gospels and and you know seeing christ which is not wrong but just living and trying to see christ you know in the old testament and the levitical offerings and the and the the uh, the fest the feasts and festivals that they kept beautiful pictures of christ so we see christ through the whole scripture and as right dividers we have to understand that it is a full panoramic view of Christ, but there we're going to see something wonderful after the four gospels. We see Paul coming on the scene, but I was just thinking, you know, we can't be too critical of them. I know the Lord was, you know, he said to Nicodemus in John three, he said, you know, art thou a teacher and you don't know these things. And he was a little abrupt with, especially with the religious ruling class. Uh, but how many years have we 
read the scripture and never came to the understanding of rightly dividing the word of truth. So we can't be too critical uh, of our of our Jewish friends, you know, for not seeing uh, what they should have seen. But anyway, that's beside the point. So, uh, so why the four views? Well, you know, when you go, if you were buying a piece of property, uh, and you were going to go look at the house, and you drive by the front of the house, and you go, wow, that's a nice house. Maybe, you know, I should put an offer on that. Uh, well, I you probably wouldn't right you'd probably want to go and look at the back side of the house you'd want to go look at the east side of the house or the west side of the house whichever way it's situated you're going to look at the four sides of the house right so when we come to the beautiful gospels uh, as we call them uh and you'll remember that still operating it's not the new testament right <laughs> and that's something you learn when you come into right division and uh when i when i came into right division the first you know my testimony when i was sick uh the first time you know i thought okay i gotta get in and i started reading through the four gospels you know and elizabeth and i were you know, living again out of the four gospels, you know, knock and you shall, uh, you know, receive and ask and you shall receive and that sort of thing. And then, you know, when I came into right division, I kind of stayed away from the gospels because I thought, well, that's the, the you know, Paul's epistles are for me. I got to learn that. But, you know, now it's amazing being in right division and when you go back and read the gospels you actually get more out of it than when you were reading them as uh you know just as trying to read the red letters and understand you know and follow christ right but we're not to follow him after his earthly ministry right we we understand that but i think when as right dividers we have to remember that the whole scripture speaks of Christ. And don't forget, Paul said, be followers of me as I am of Christ. So it's always Christ. Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, he's the one that died at Calvary, right? So, uh, okay. Let's look at, first of all, where did I put my notes? Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's hard not getting feedback from you guys. I, I don't hear you, and uh, I like I like hearing from the, the crew, you know? But anyways, it's... <laughs> So let's look at Ezekiel chapter one. Ezekiel chapter one. Hey Lenny, I'm just so you know, I'm gonna finish about twenty-two. <laughs> okay. And you can in the year twenty-two. <laughs> what time is it now? I have no idea what time it is now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, when you finish, you get finished. Okay. Uh, okay. Exodus 1, verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, they had, the, they four had the face of a man, the face of a lion on the right side, and the four had the face Where of an ox it? on the left side. Oh, sorry. Ezekiel chapter 1, oh. verse 10. <laughs> Sorry, I've, Eric, told good, me, Eric told me, he says, say it three times. Okay. <laughs> Ezekiel 1, verse 10. I'm just trying to get so much stuff out. And, uh, I understand. My we, mind's... We got next, Mom. 
<laughs> you don't hurry. It's it's too good for you to hurry through, Ernie. Okay. It's too good for you to hurry through. It's really great. As for the likeness of their faces, they four, so the four, had the face of a man and the face of a lion and on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. So if we try to chart this out, so if you were charting this out, now Elizabeth said to me, they really can't see the chart. So she said, explain it as you're <laughs> going through it. So I'm taking it from my wife, how to do this. I mean, as far as getting it across. So if we look at the four, we get four. So Ezekiel chapter one, verse 10, we have these four things mentioned, lion and ox the face of a man and an eagle. So if you want on your chart, put Ezekiel 110 at the top. Or I think I did that. Didn't I? You got it there, brother. Oh, okay. So you put those four down and you, and then we're going to go to Revelation 4 verse. Verse 6. Verse, Revelation 4 verse 6. Revelation. <laughs> Revelation 4, verse 6. Um, <laughs> under the R6. No. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Sorry, I shouldn't fool around. That's not. Okay. Okay. Revelation 4, uh, verse 6. Therefore, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes uh, before and behind. The first beast was like a lion. The second beast like a calf. The third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Four beasts, which each of them six wings and so on, uh, and the, did not rest night and day. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and is, and is to come. So, again, so if you put in the second column, Revelation 4, verses 6 to 7, this time, if you notice, it's in a different order. You have a lion, and then you have the calf or, or an ox, which is equal to the ox, man, and an eagle. Now, just like we said about the four sides of a house, uh, we have the four corners of the earth, right? North, south, east, west. And we see here around God's throne, there are these four figures. And this is the way in which God has chosen to express himself and express Christ. Everything all right? Yeah. Ernie, oh, take a, well, yeah. please take a break for a second. We, we're having a little discussion trying oh. to get it straight. No, it's, it's all good. It's all good. What? Go ahead. Ezekiel 110. I, I, I was listening to Ernie talk. Yeah. And he spoke lion, ox, face, and eagle. Right. And it's not that way in, in Ezekiel. No, he just said it. Okay. It's, it's, a, a, it's a different order. It's a different yeah. order. Okay, let's see here. All right, Ernie, we try. Uh, yeah, it says man first. It says man, 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 lion, ox, eagle, and Ezekiel. Man, lion, man, ox, land, man. Don't act. Don't ask me why they're a different order, but the thing is, they're all there. They're all there, okay? <laughs> so, in the prophets and in, well, I mean, really, John was a prophet, right? So, in Revelation. But but the, the thing we take away from this is that God has chosen four ways to reveal Christ to us, and that's important. Now, we want to look at four other statements in the scripture uh, concerning Christ. So let's first of all turn to uh, let's uh, turn to Jeremiah 30 uh, sorry, Jeremiah 23 verse 5 Jeremiah 23 
verse 5. Jeremiah is right after Isaiah. I remember as a kid, we used to sing the song, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And, you know, you, as a kid, you'd sing the songs to find out where you were in the Bible. Um, okay. And, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to mention, too. Uh, you know, when you do rightly divide, then you can locate, uh, you know, wherever you are on the on the chart, right? And the chart, uh, I know we use the chart as a visual aid, but now when you read the scriptures, right, divided, you go, okay, that, you know, you can categorize where the scriptures uh, fit on the timeline in God's timeline. So let's look at uh, Jeremiah 23, verse 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. And I will raise unto David a righteous branch. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. So you notice that when we're going to look at the four gospels a little clo more closely in the weeks to come. But, you know, John 1. I mean, I, you know, I grew up reading john i mean john was it you know like what do you read after you're saved john right you know so as a young boy when i was saved you know i had you know the older brethren would come and say young man read read john you know that'll really give you a lot of joy i wish they had told me to read romans <laughs> it would have been a little better but anyway in the beginning was the word and you notice that word in john one is capitalized w right here we see a capitalized b so we see that this is a title given to the lord jesus christ so behold so we have a behold statement now if if you go to on the chart and you'll see the uh sorry no we're doing branch right now if you go to your branch titles, put down Jeremiah 23, verse 5. And behold, uh, be, sorry, behold, the days will come. And a king. So behold the branch. So that goes in under your behold statements and the branch titles. So your behold statement. Uh, we'll have behold like oh boy i've really messed up here i am so sorry you know what i got my my chart is backwards to this chart um okay let's go to zachariah 9 9 so remember those two things okay the branch which is a title that goes under your branch titles jeremiah 23 uh five Oh, too much fentanyl this week. No, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, okay. Zechariah, Zechariah, chapter nine, verse nine. Zechariah, chapter nine, verse nine. Oh, and it's past twenty-two. Uh, Zechariah nine nine. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. So, behold, thy king cometh. So, under your behold statement, Zechariah 9.9, 9, under your branch statement, Jeremiah 23, verse 5. So you have your branch statement which talks about the branch, which will be a, a king. And you have the behold statement. Behold, thy king cometh. Okay, let's go to 
Matthew. Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Now, Matthew, we're going to see the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the lineage here uh, is the line that uh, gives the Lord Jesus Christ the legal right uh, to the throne, right? And uh, through Joseph, and you'll remember that Joseph was his stepfather. And you'll notice, too, in the, in the King James Bible, uh, Joseph is not called his father. In the modern versions, uh, that happens. So, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So, we, you know, it's interesting to notice he doesn't start with Abraham, right? He starts with David. And that's because Matthew is going to bring before us the one aspect and the facet concerning the Lord Jesus Christ of his life that he was the king, right? So, in verse 6, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon. <laughs> and Lenny and I, Lenny pointed that out to me. I've heard that of being the wife of Urias, right? So anyway, that's interesting. Uh, so then we come down uh, to chapter 2, verse 2. Now, uh, well, let's start at verse 1 for connection. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east saying, where is he? that is born king of the Jews. Now, I would, I would suspect that Matthew is going to lean towards showing us something about the, the Lord Jesus Christ as one that is born king to Israel. Uh, you know, <laughs> Well, well, we'll explore Matthew. Uh, I'm going to quit now, Lenny. Uh, I'm sorry I took longer than I thought. I didn't think I'd have enough energy to go this long, but hey. Uh, but I just want to leave it, this with you as an encouragement because as home church, we want to leave each other encouraged. And that's the motivation why I do this. And Lenny's and Lisa are kind enough to let me be part of this is that when you go from here today, that you'll be encouraged that we can hold the preserved word of God in our hands and we can look through it. And, you know, you think of the amount of light that Israel had. They had the books of Moses, they had the prophets, and they had the Psalms, the poetic books. And we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right to Revelation. Boy, the generation in the dispensation of grace, the many generations that have lived, I feel they are going to be so held and so responsible for the amount of light that they were given. And we, as ambassadors, now, you know, Israel had a king but we're part of his body. And we're going to learn as Paul speaks. Paul, you know, we're going to look at some wonderful things in quote unquote, the fifth gospel, right? When Paul says, according to my gospel, and we're going to learn that we are ambassadors for Christ. And as we go around in our day-to-day -day life, and I'm, you know, like, my wife knows me so well, right? She knows I get down. She knows I'm, I, you know, I have a pessimistic personality. She's more of an optimist, you know, and she says to me, Ernie, what? Get into the scripture and, you know, start practicing what you preach. And it, it's true. You know, we, we have to get into the scripture. We have to do it daily, man. It's like, 
you gotta. And like Eric says, you know, it's like, it's sometimes a battle, right? But anyways, you get into the scripture. So just go forward today. I hope this has been some encouragement. And the thing I wanted to stress was, even though we're studying prophecy, and we see how the Bible is all connected together and how God uses things. And we're going to explore why he uses these four things, uh, these four facets uh, of Christ showing us uh, the beauties of Christ in the four gospels. We can see how the, the Bible all connects together. It's not random. And the only way that happens is because God, wrote this book 66 authors i'm uh, sorry 66 books 40 authors and they're all saying the same thing they're all pointing to christ we look at christ through mystery they look at christ through prophecy so i just hope that encourages us uh, just to grow in the confidence of our scripture that we can place our you know we're placing our whole eternity on what this book says and you know, it's just like, wow. I mean, there's nothing stable in this world except this. So anyway, that's it. That's all I got for now. Thank you. I hope you feel better, Ernie. Ernie, thank you, Ernie. We, Let's we, pray, pray for Ernie real quick. Huh? Father, we thank you so much for Ernie and Elizabeth and the effort and the vigor and the love the passion that ernie prepared this lesson with and he was able to get through it today father bless the rest of his day as he rests and and uh concentrates on who he is in christ and with elizabeth doing the same to him and for him being an incredible wife who loves the lord as much as he does much as he does father what a uh, edifying Time we always have with Ernie and Elizabeth, and I pray uh, they have a wonderful rest of the evening in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Love you, Ernie. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Take one, pass it around, Brother Brown. Thank you, Ernie. <laughs> I'm I'm going to go down and listen to my. Let's okay. My wife down on the couch. <laughs> Take one and pass it around, brother. Brown. <laughs> when he was talking about the Old Testament book, they had blank prophets and psalms. What was the first thing? Oh, it said three things. Oh, and what do you know? Uh, this is 2444. Okay, and what was it? You got it, boy? Yeah. Is there anything you need to me to tell you? Oh, we got it, Ernie. Oh, okay. Thank you. Enough, Frank. We got to get through all of this today, Frank. So it's good to brought plenty of food for me. And then we have supper, dinner. Fuck you. Yeah, we got a lot to get through today, everybody. Wife and Malia is not going to be I mean, I, I enjoy doing it. I love it. I, I love it too. It's like, you know, you know, the war is, you know, I do that. Yeah. Put look at Fox News. Yeah. yeah. Side. And then you go sit by the scriptures and have about 15 minutes. You go, hey, this is cool. And, and Stan and everybody, I never, ever do what the initial thought was. I have an initial thought. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. It never happened. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm a great teacher, but my brain just goes, oh, let's look at this. I didn't know that. Right. <laughs> I'm scared to say that. You got that little detour it comes. Yeah. Like Proverbs. I never read Proverbs in my life till this week. <laughs>
But notice here, we're going to start with what? In so Proverbs. It's, it's amazing all the prophecies and psalms. Yes, yes. <laughs> all right, we're not going in Romans. We're going over here. Uh, this, this is the one we're going to do today. <laughs> the one that says uh, home church notes. That's the one we're going to do today. <laughs> the one we're going to do today, uh, everybody, the one that says home church notes for yeah. February 11th. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In, uh, they can't see what you they have, they have a copy of it. Oh, they do? I emailed them all copies. Oh, yeah, we perfect around here, Stan. Way ahead of Everybody's got, got their two copies? Well, these health standards are something else. I'm telling you. No, we're one of them, I know that. <laughs> all right, everybody, been in the bathroom break, got a cup of coffee. Because I have no idea what time it is. Been in the break. Yeah, that was a break. Been in the 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 break. All right, well, this so all right, well, what I got probably take about three times, but that's okay. Everybody, nope, okay, now they just like that, Brady. Time to get started, they got to go to the toilet. Call them, Brady. I think you your fault. You told them that. I did. But I realized they didn't. <laughs> I did. Work through it. It's good. It's fivefold. Oh, now nah, we're good. Being late. I'm going to start a minute. I'm ready. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming again today. And uh, Kathy and Ernie must have read my notes because uh, what they said kind of just slides right on in. <laughs> Uh, our dear, our dear sister Kathy, uh, as most of us, well, not me, but most of y'all, uh, I didn't seek Christ till later in life, but was, was seeking, honestly, mm -hmm. you know, um, and went off in this direction, that direction, backwards, forwards, upside down. And then she came to a knowing. And in her spirit, she goes, that's true. I believe that. I believe that. One, the scripture says it. <laughs> Though I didn't know it for 30 years, the party. But it does say that. It does say I'm crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live, I live through the faith of the Son of God. But the rest of heaven that lived and died from, I, I may, may be misconstrued. But Kathy goes, I believe that. That's what it says. And now let me make it fit. So now after we have that belief moment, then we have to make it fit. How does that fit? Mm -hmm. And that, I'm sure, has been the experience of most of us. Okay? So how does it, how does it fit? There's things that God wants us to know. K-N-O-W. Knowledge. Known. He's made known. Oh, God's a big mystery. He's not. <laughs> He's not, but you have to seek it. You have to look for it. You have to dig in. And the scripture says we got to do that too. We can't, which is what I did for a long time, listen to Jerry Brown, listen to Connie, listen to the TV preachers, you know, going down to Trinity Evangelical 30 years ago and listen to somebody who we thought was was doing the best he could, teaching the truth. Yep. No, Lenny, you gotta you gotta know it yourself. And why it also fits in, I'm listening to Kathy, and Kathy's saying, "Well, I found out some things that were true about Christ, which are now true about me. It ain't about me. It ain't about what I do. It's about what He did, and me just having faith in it." So. Uh, I kind of decided uh, yesterday. I don't. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting a little bit too commercial. And if I am, you know, kick me in the rear end. But I kind of have been kind of latched on to this verse real quick before I get started. First uh, Thessalonians two thirteen. Everybody, it's that. I kind of kind of want to make that 
First Thessalonians 2 13. Got kind of got asked a question a few weeks ago about the scriptures and how does that work for you? And you know, is some kind of a psychology or no, <laughs> no. It's simple. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Letty does not do that. <laughs> I should. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. Okay, there's a, talk about nine more words, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. The body of Christ don't believe God's word. They say they'll believe it. Most of them don't believe it. You know, hopefully this little group, I'm speaking of Lenny, hopefully Lenny will walk in slowly but surely in more belief. So he walks in it. So, uh, and Lisa and I were talking yesterday before about, um, you, you kind of hear the same message occasionally from different preachers. To me, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And the basics, if I, I need to hear it at least three or four times a week, because you forget. And so I was thinking a uh, uh, little, per, uh, little personal note. I've been subbing fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and it's actually ninth grade math this week. It's like, oh, no. but by the way, if you don't know, I taught fifth grade math for forever. Oh, they're going to be getting into some stuff, you know? I'm not bragging on me, but my second day there, I went, I know that stuff. I had forgotten it. I knew it. I always knew it. But being being in front of my face and having a, you know, 12-year-old going, can you help me? Okay. <laughs> so, no. I knew it, but I didn't think about seventh grade or the, whatever they're doing. Coordinate planes and all that monkey shines. But I, I do know it. And I did know it. I just need to be told it. So uh, what we're going to do is the title of this message is No. What Paul wants us to know. What Paul wants us to know. So in other words, what God wants us to know. What Paul wants us to know because God wants us to know. So as I'm studying, I don't know, eight, nine days ago, whatever reason, I'm going, God must have told the Jewish people they should know something. So I Googled no. There's almost 1,300 times in the scripture. In the King James Bible, it says either no knowledge or known. And a bunch of times it's in good old Proverbs. Okay. So if you allow me, let's go back to Proverbs uh, 12, 23. Because this is a real interesting one. And I don't think I got the whole scripture here. Anybody want to read it out loud? Proverbs 12, 23. Yep, that's it. Fruit. All right, we're going to look. Actually, okay, I'm sorry, Gail and everybody else. I, I'm focusing on the word prudent. Prudent. What does that mean? Wise. Wise. <laughs> You want... somebody don't know. Yeah, thank you. Why? You want to read it, Gail? Well, she was going to read oh, it. Oh, who's going to read it? Oh. oh. You want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. Man, consume with knowledge. <laughs> go ahead. I just did it. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know that. A wise man can see this knowledge. Isn't there a little more? Yeah, there's more. <laughs> all the few proclaiming foolishness. Okay. So, the wise man obviously is God. And there was something that we all understand, I believe we all do, that there was something he concealed 
from some wascally guy called who do who do you uh, conceal it from? Satan. Satan. Amen. He concealed it from Satan. If Satan would have known the plan, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Isn't that something? Because, mm -hmm. you know, I thought it was saying God wrote a book to us, and he wants us to know. But apparently he concealed something from somebody. And boy, the enemy. Yeah, that's right. The enemy. Put the heart of fools proclaim fools. So the fool is Satan. He's the fool. Yeah. That's the way. That's the way I read it. He's the fool because he was in God's throne room, God. and he's going to get burned up for a long time. What a fool, huh? Yeah. All right. So Proverbs twenty-five two says it again. It is. I don't know if I got the whole verse here, but it says it, it is the glory of God to conceal the things. But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Isn't that something? When God, when our Savior, the King, was walking on earth, did he know the scriptures? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously he was not concealed from God. He was uh, Jesus because he was able to search it out. So um, I think that's a little bit, and I'm not saying that this is a prophecy of the mystery program. But it's it's kind of about God's wisdom, God's prudence, mm -hmm. God being prudent, God being prudent. All right. So if you want uh, if you want some other uh, verses in in Proverbs, later which it uh, contains a lot of them contain the word prudence, wisdom, and knowledge. So the the others that contain, I'll just say. Prudence and knowledge is uh, Proverbs 8, 12, Proverbs 12, 23, which is one we read, Proverbs 14, 18, and Proverbs 18, 15 has the word prudence and the word knowledge. So yes, God was revealing knowledge. <clears throat> To his uh, the Jewish people, Israel. All right, so that's what they had to live by. It was concealed. Some things were concealed from them. Now, what we're going to do? God is we're gonna to go to Ephesians chapter one. I can get there. For the time constraints, Scotty, though, we're just going to read Ephesians 1 8. But if you want to go to those Proverbs that I just told you, and then read all of Ephesians chapter 1, boy, that lit me up a few days ago. It was very uh, encouraging. But Ephesians um, 1 8, now watch this. Wherein he had abounded, he's not hiding it anymore. <laughs> abounded toward us. How about that, Stan? Uh -huh. And nothing concealed anymore. As Ernie said, we got the whole gospel. We got the whole Bible. We can read it. We can study it. In some wisdom and prudence. Is that what it says, Connie? No. What's it say? <laughs> All wisdom and prudence. Well, Connie, I picked on you on purpose, so you gotta read nine and ten too. <laughs> How about that? Well, according to his good pleasure, which he had proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together and want all things in Christ. 
both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Thank you, Connie. You, that, you that's studying all things a while back. How about that? Yeah, yeah. all things. You know something? How the scripture just, thank you, Sam. Mm -hmm. How things just kind of come together. Isn't that something? So he's not concealing it. He says, abounding toward us, having made known. How about that? Known. Now, once again, we got to dig in and dig it out. We got to, you know, not watch the ball game or not watch Fox News or whatever and, uh, and dig in and find it. But there it is for us. And then we got to go back to Thessalonians. We got to believe it. We got to believe what it says. And guess what it doesn't say? Does that say we got to understand it? Anybody read a scripture or a chapter or a couple of chapters and it's said, uh, uh, I'm not sure about what I understand? He doesn't say understand it. But what does he say? Believe it. So the, yeah. So if you don't understand it, don't beat yourself up. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Call somebody. Read it again. Go get a cup of coffee. Read it again. Call somebody. Talk to them about it. This room's filled with ambassadors mm -hmm. who would love, uh, uh, you know, love to. Hey, I'm having trouble with this scripture. Can we talk about it? And guess what? Everybody's gonna do. Sure. Turn the TV off. Turn the radio off. Let's take a look. Uh, call Eric. Watch a video. It it's there. It is really there, y'all. All right, so. Do me a favor and take a look here at this page. Oh, yeah. Now, I didn't count them, which I should have. But it says no. That's where it says no knowledge or known in all the epistles. Knowing, like knowing. Is there a lot to know there? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. Some of them are very similar. Or, but uh, so today, because of time constraints, and we, we're going to get to all of these, I hope, in the next couple of months. Today, because of time constraints, um, let's take a look at, I'm sure it's some of you guys and gals' favorite chapter, Romans 6. We're just going to do 4 or 5 in Romans 6. There we go. Romans 6. So remember, he's abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. All. All. All right. Miss uh, Lisa, would you read uh, Romans 6 3, please? No, you not that so many of us as were baptized into, the, into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Amen. Wow. So you go to the church at the corner of crossing crosswalk. Do they know that? <laughs> Do they? No. Mm -mm. They got a swimming pool behind the altar, which they shouldn't have either one. <laughs> and they're going to dunk you. That's what they think baptism is. Nope. No water, Gail. Say it again. No water. Very good. Very good. Miss Josie, would you please read Romans 6 6? No. No? All right. All right, the table. Fine. <laughs> Romans 6 6. Read it now. <laughs> Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him in that. And the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. <clears throat> Miss Gail Brule, is the word is the uh, present tense is is present tense? Yeah. Yes. Is you know the other Bible change it was could be might have been yeah. is present tense. Crucified. That means I'm dead. Old Adam's dead. Yep. Old Adam's dead. All right, everybody. Uh, 
Let's see this table. So Stan, how about you do six nine? Romans six nine, my friend. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. So if death has no more dominion over him, death has no more dominion over oh. us. Amen. Wow. We can stop right there and go, wow. <laughs> wow. All right, Romans, uh, next one will be Romans 6.16. Brother Brown, you want to read that one? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves service to obey, his service ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Man. Man, oh man. That's some good stuff we should know. And we're supposed to walk in that each and every day. Each and every day. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, I was reading early and I saw 7 1. <laughs> Romans 7, 7, chapter 1. Said, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Isn't that something? Know ye not, brethren, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. So I read it. We won't do it, but I read the next couple of verses. I think two, three, four, and two, three, and four. And it's like, oh, he's talking about a woman and her husband, which is true. I think he's talking about Israel. Who would, yeah, she's the woman. She won't give up on her religion. So she can't step out into life in the spirit. Because she wants to stay attached to her husband, the law. That's that's something I think. Y'all can say, you can hit me in the head with a shoe and say, Lenny, I think you're crazy. I think that's to Israel. Yes, is it to a woman? Yes, it is. But I think that uh, Mr. Verstegen and Mr. Uh, Alex had taught me to look at this. I'm going to confess spiritually. Mm -hmm. Look at these verses. Yeah, right. a woman shouldn't do that. Shouldn't be married twice. But I think he's talking to Israel. Mm -hmm. I think he's saying, bound by, first uh, verse two, for the woman which had the husband is bound by the, well, Israel was bound by the law. The Savior's walking around. He's resurrected. He's telling you guys, get over yourself and walk in the Spirit. Paul has a new message, a new message of freedom, of grace. And they went, nah, I think I'll marry to my old law that beats me up. Well, the first verse tells you to speak to them that know the law, so they would have to be in you. Thank you. I call, yes, very good. I caught that too. I said, mm, for I speak to them that know the law. It, I think he's talking to Israel. I really they do. They're the ones that know it. Right. They're the ones that know the law. So, uh, like I said, you can hit me in the head with a brick. So, if you're dead to the law, like it says here, become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Amen. So, we are free. We're free. Very good. That's what the woman is, free. When the woman dies. is free. When he dies. Very good. Very good. All right, so I did have to cheat a little bit, everybody. I had to go to 611. Doesn't have the word no, but I got my in my little notes. This is our redneck southern here. <laughs> well, read that, boss. Good. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm, amen. Mm. Reckon yourself dead indeed, uh, indeed to sin, but we are alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And to me, that's some good stuff to know. Mm -hmm. Some really good stuff. To know. 
And I think it's okay for Lenny. Like I said, I'll just keep speaking to me. It's okay if I read this every day. <laughs> read this good stuff every day. These things I should know. Like I knew that math. I hadn't thought about it in a long time, but I know this right now, but I will forget it. Not the too distant future. So, um, so things to know from God. And like I said, I, I enjoyed doing those, uh, I think it's 11 verses from Proverbs on being prudent. And here's, here's, hold on if I can be, here's one of my favorites from Proverbs. All you guys better raise your hand and say, oh yeah, me too. <laughs> House and riches, it's a Proverbs 19.14. And all you guys are going to go, yeah, that's one of my favorites too. <laughs> Proverbs 19, verse 14. Okay. All you guys on the internet better be raising your hand saying, oh, yeah, it's my favorite, let me tell you. <laughs> you got it, Stan? You read it? <laughs> House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. So that's some good stuff to know, isn't it? Right, Stan? Mm -hmm. In that. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, everybody. Um, as you can see on your little handout here, there's a bunch more. A bunch more from guess where? Romans. Shocking, right? Romans has a bunch of no's. Now, who wants to guess who's the second one? Well, you got it in front of you where uh, Paul's kind of tightening a bunch of folks up. First what? First what? It's, it's on here. Look, look on your sheet. Where, where did Paul have to tighten the church up? First Corinth. Corinth. You guys need to know this. <laughs> then Second Corinthians, a little less, kind of goes down a little bit. Isn't it interesting? By the time you get to uh, Philemon, how many is it? One. How come? You were supposed to know it already. How much had to be said about the condition of? Uh, yeah, about the condition of first, the Corinthians. Second Corinthians, a few less. You know, Galatians. It, I've kind of. Well, it was interesting. Galatians only had four. Thessalonians, and that, that was, I think, a couple of uh, his first epistles, I believe. Hello. Everybody okay? <laughs> okay, so uh, next time we, we may go ahead and finish the other ones in Romans, which I, I think we should, and then we'll we'll move on down, uh, down the line and who knows? I might read something else that or tweaks my interest and take a look because the uh, proverbs is very interesting, <laughs> very interesting. So thanks everybody. The God has us uh, wherein He has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, and it's there in the in the cabin. Isn't it wonderful to find it? Yes. And then you want to give it away, huh? You want to Yes. Not me. Yeah, I got some incredible stuff that God has written to you also. So um thank you everybody on the internet. Appreciate it. Hey Lily. Hey, hey I Miss love you. Oh, oh my god. Love I love you too, Miss Bernadette. I wish you were here. Yeah, Richard, but she said. Is Say it, it again. She says she loves you a lot, Lanny. Really oh my gosh. <laughs> I love her too. I wish I could get my big hug right now. Ernie. 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 Amen. Thank y'all for joining in, everybody. Enjoyed it very much. I hope y'all had a good meal. Yes, we did. We enjoyed you guys chiming in too. We appreciate it so much. Thank you. For
Thank you for the word. All right. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you.